We like sports and we don't care who knows From shooting hoops to the Super Bowl Just two normal guys hanging out having fun Right guy number two? Yeah, guy number one Watching sports with girls is a pain They don't know the rules, there's no time to explain Throw me the baseball Now toss me the pigskin Now feed me the rock Now give me the rock Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight. Seven, six, six, six five, five, four, four three, two, one. Hey, hey, oh, there you go. Boom, there you go. Oh. Three, two, one, boom, ball drop. Hopefully Tony Romo is nowhere near else. That will be a drop ball for the special New Year's edition of the Weekly Sports Report. I am Keele. This is Bill K. Via satellite? No, our satellite link was down, so we got old time radio. Do I sound like I'm on old time radio? Have him on the phone. Say hi, Bill K. Hi, Bill K. There he is. Echo, echo. Uh, and uh, we're going to start off here with the NFL playoff picture and the paintbrush going a little bit more clearer now. We can kind of see what's going on. What do, uh, what do you make of this so far? Uh, I think right now we've got teams in, but I'm going to say that uh, Giants are going to beat Dallas right here. And I okay. say that the Chiefs are going to uh, give Kyle Ward a measure of revenge, beat the Broncos, knock them out of the playoffs, get the Lakers in. Whew. And uh, we'll say, I think the Lions are going to continue to a little bit of magic and get the fifth seed. So okay. that's my feeling on the, the uh, AFC playoff picture. I'm hoping that the Steelers, that sounds weird, I'm hoping the Steelers get ahead of the Ravens so that the Ravens have to deal with the road. Yeah, yeah, that, that'll be sort of a strange picture to see the Raiders in the playoffs. It seems like they're always just supposed to suck, and then that's it, and then they're out of the playoffs, or they're fighting for 500, but Raiders in the playoffs, especially being without McFadden for a little bit, uh, they kind of took the road less traveled there. It's been an ugly, weird up and down year for them, so it would be in, with Al Davis, the Al Davis passing, and mm-hmm. one of those would be kind of a nice thing, and a lot of people would be rooting for them a little bit, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in uh, this week, 16 was not without its uh, share of news. Uh, you had, well, kind of two two ends of the spectrum here. On one end, you had Adrian Peterson, who you know got hurt. Kind of his his life of the knee was ended by the knife. his knee pretty good in the third quarter and now he's going to need some major surgery on ACL and MCL hopefully ready by 2012. Is that something that you can kind of tell a professional athlete to hey our team's not going anywhere why don't you go ahead and sit even though you're the six million dollar man plus you know probably a few more million there. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. But I don't want to spend a lot of money. Is he supposed to run during these meaningless games? Yeah, I think that, that's the thing, too, that he's got, like, from a fan's perspective, even though it's in Washington, it's like there are people from Washington who went to that game to watch one of the best running backs in the league right now play football. And it's, they're like, well, oh, since we're losing and we're playing against a team that's not involved in the playoff picture at all, we're going to rest tonight. You, you can't do that. You can't do that with the product. The NFL is strong on that big time. Mm-hmm. And I know it's unfortunate, but it's part of the game. Injuries are part of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, so many people get injured in preseason, so it's like, well, you're not supposed to play the preseason either, and then you know, and then it's like, why play any down of football? Because you can get hurt at any time. Well, and the other thing, too, is you could try and protect the person practice, and uh, the uh, U.S. running back, Stephon Johnson, got injured lifting weights a couple years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you can do everything you can to try and protect someone, and they could still end up getting hurt. So yeah. Live your life, play the game, and, and deal with things as they come. Hey! Hey! hey, hey, hey. You do. You gotta, you gotta live your life. And uh, Drew Brees is living the breezy life right now because on the other end of the spectrum for should he play, should he not play, he just broke Dan Marino's non-Super Bowl winning record there. So, ugh, sort of the one-upper there. Uh, you have Drew Brees who's won one more Super Bowl than he has, and now he's broken his passing record with one game to spare. Now, in, in this game, you sort of, well, you know, the, the Saints are already winning, and, you know, it's kind of the Falcons were no threat to come from behind, but Breeze was still in there. They've already handled the game. He's still throwing. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you're Falcons coach Smith here, is this scene as running up the score? Because, hey, you're already losing the game, but now you're insulting injury. Oh, we, we want a record, too. As a coach, you 
coach Mike Smith, you do know why he's doing it. That doesn't make you any happier. No. I would be surprised if he didn't kind of say, hey, remember last year when the Saints ran up the score at the end of the season? Let's make sure that we use that as our motivation next year whenever we play against them. I think yeah. it's strengthen the rivalry, and I think it's, it's going to be uh, pretty interesting to watch in the coming seasons. Mm-hmm. I understand why Sean Payton did it, though. He wanted to try and get through the record this week, so next week he could Kind of coast to the long way without a hangover that. Yep, yep. Uh, the monkey off his back. The uh, the key to the lock has been found for the NBA. NBA season is well underway, and if you're in Seattle, well, not now. It's a special Portland edition. Since we have a via phone here, we got the B-Roy, <laughs> B-Roy backdrop. Uh, I really don't much care that the NBA has started. And uh, But you can't help but notice that defending champion Dallas Mavericks and the L.A. Lake Show Lakers, they're starting out 0-2, and, and then the Bill Simmons Zombie Sonics, Oklahoma City Thunder, they're starting out 2-0. and what, uh, what, what a start for a wacky, wacky league. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's showing that with this season, especially with the games compacted, having some nights where there's back-to-back-to-back games going on, mm-hmm. teams with young legs, teams that didn't have a lot of changeover, uh, are going to do well. Yeah. Now, after all, the Lakers had a weird off-season loss from their key parts. But well, the city, what'd you hear about them? Catcher Kirk didn't lost weight. That was the big news. I don't know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it should. So while I'm cleaning up your Oklahoma City vomit, we'll move on to some more local love with the Seahawks beating the Niners. Did you see that game? Oh, that two-minute drive. Tavares, he proved he was the guy. We got the ball back after that David Akers field goal. Or, or no, that didn't that didn't happen? What happened? I just, I tuned out after David Akers hit the field goal. I just assumed, we, you know, we had it in the bag since, you know, we're on the 44. What happened? I would hide five Tavares Jackson, but better not lay a finger on his butter finger. Nobody better lay a finger on my better finger. Yeah. My goodness, talk about taking the wind out of the stadium and took all the fans out of the stadium too. That ball bounced into the white jersey Niners when everyone uh, checked the pieces up. It was, uh-huh. it was pretty sad sight to see. And if anyone out there still thinks we don't need a quarterback on this team, uh, watch that game. Yeah, it would yeah. Be, uh, yeah, the, the deal with Tavares is he's still making, you know, those mistakes where he just can't as a quarterback. Now, at this stage in the game, he's already 29. We've already seen what he can do at Minnesota. That is Jack Squat. We bring him in here for the no competition at every other position except quarterback. Thanks, Pete Carroll. Uh, Pete Hypocrite Carroll there. And, uh, you know, Tavares has just handed it on a golden platter. He does absolutely squat with it. If we have like a 23-year-old quarterback making these mistakes of holding the ball too long and not going through progressions, I- I'm fine with that. That's room for growth, and oh, he'll be able to fix it. Uh, Tavares, buddy, you're rounding the running back NFL death age of 30. Uh, you, you, if these mistakes aren't fixed by now, uh, you know how can anyone rally behind number seven right there? So you know, it's uh, the, the Seahawks. Just charge through. Huskies team you're going to get here? Is it the, oh, we just went off and then no problem, we handled them Huskies? Or the, why aren't they playing defense? How did we let them shoot the three at the buzzer Huskies? Uh, so, you know, I, I say we're just going to split one and one. We're still going to have to get used to some things here. And, you know, the, the Huskies, their base, their key is on defense. And when Roden just gets breezed by and then it's, oh, you know, give me the ball, we're heading on offense. Uh, you can't be doing that. The defense helps set up the offense. That's what makes the run and gun so good. When you continually get beat on defense, that kind of makes the offense that much worse because 
we're not a set play offense of a lot of people running around. We just kind of wait around around the perimeter, and then Tony Roden drives in and either gets hacked on his way, or he'll try to make some fancy no-look behind-the-back pass to one of the perimeter shooters. That seems to be our offense. So the defense is key, and they definitely need to be tuning that up before conference play. But uh, I say we go one and one here. I agree. One and one. Okay. Need to drop the channel battle. Time for a little chassis-dassle. And on the other side of the Mont Lake for the Huskies, you have the football team playing the two Bs, the Baylor Bears, and uh, playing the Heisman Trophy winner in Robert Griffin III, wearing his little Superman shirt, maybe, who knows? And uh, he'll have dreadlocks falling all over him, but uh, are we going to be able to hold him? I mean, Heisman Trophy winner, last time we played, Desmond Howard doing the, doing the pose wrong, but we were able to handle Michigan, so are we going to be able to handle Baylor? Yeah, I think we are. And you know why? Because their defense is actually worse statistically than our Whew. defense. I think this is going to be one of the more exciting shootout games. I don't know if the punchers even need to go to San Antonio. <laughs> and uh, I feel like the last thing of the ball is going to win, and that team's going to be the last piece. I think uh, uh, Keith and the boys are, are going to lead them to victory, and it's going to be something ridiculous, like 63 to 60. Is it just just a high just shootout game where Kyle Rask is on the sideline going, I, 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 how does he keep getting work? How does Kevin Costner keep getting work? Because uh, he won't, he won't be out there. Putting his feet up, kicking back and relaxing. Good stuff. Now speaking of uh, kicking back and relaxing, now that the uh, Seahawks don't really have to worry about if this team loses and this team loses, because when you lose with 49ers, you don't really have to worry about the playoff picture here. So. Now we can kind of kick our feet up and play the Helter Skelton Cardinals. Uh, it's sort of a, a meaningless game here if you go back to that. Uh, should Marshawn Lynch sit out since it's a meaningless game? You, you're going to tell me that, you know, hey, you can just eat your Skittles on the sideline. We don't need you for this game. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, plus he's playing for a contract, so he's going to want to really uh, yeah. play well. Yeah, I'll, I'll have the Seahawks beating the Cardinals, and I'll also have the Huskies beating Baylor. I just realized I didn't do a prediction in the prediction section. I <laughs> sure, sure fumbled that. Uh, hopefully that's my last mistake of 2011. Victory formation. Let's get into it. Uh, Bill, did you see something a little awry in that Packers and Bears game? Yes, there were. There was a very unhappy ex-boyfriend, but you know what? He cheated on the little Packers fan. Sounds like she sent him cheese packing. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and, for, and for my little take here, uh, you have a potential stadium being built here in the Soto District, uh, just south of Safeco. You have a, a hedge fund investor, uh, you know, using all his private money here, trying to get a stadium built for a NHL and NBA team. I could really care less about the NBA team, but uh, but the NHL would be cool, and especially that Seattle Vancouver rivalry. That would be something to watch. I'm fine with this as long as it doesn't use a dime of taxpayer money because the last time that worked out, how did that work out of the key arena, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I'll get excited about this when it breaks down. Exactly. I when, when, like, oh, another person going to try. Yeah. When the, yeah, when, when, yeah when, when, the, when that first shovel goes in, then I'll be a little bit more excited. But right now it's ho-hum. And going into 2012... And this has been the weekly New Year's Eve sports report. I am Keeley. That was Bill K. Weez is out.